Well, there it goes. Delta 206, Detroit to Rome. The flight we were hoping to be on. Buongiorno e benvenuto alla nostra adventura italiana. For those of you that don't know what non-revving is, one of the best benefits for working at almost any airline is being able to fly. Whether it's domestically for free, internationally by just paying the airport tax and fees, or on other airlines who your airline has an interline agreement with by paying a Z-fare. This huge perk of working for an airline does have some drawbacks, however. It is on a space available seniority base, and unfortunately today, there was no space. So back to the beginning of June, our Italian adventure actually starts on Delta 134, from Detroit to Amsterdam. Fortunately, this flight, not only did they have seats for us, but there were seats up front. After the approximate 7.5 hour flight on a Pratt & Whitney powered Airbus A330-300 in seat 7A and Delta 1, we arrived in Amsterdam looking into plan B and C of getting us to where we wanted to be. Thankfully for me, my girlfriend is a non-rev and Zedfair genius, and Amsterdam is basically Delta's European hub, and you can get pretty much anywhere. After about only an hour and a half on the ground, we decided our best bet to get to Florence, Italy was via Milan and a train. Thanks to the very helpful KLM ground staff, we made it on board KLM Flight 1621 to Milan, MXP. The flight was aboard PHBXA, a Boeing 737-800. After about an hour and a half flight, we arrived in Milan. We then went to the train station in the airport and bought our tickets to take us to Milan Central Station. Much like our first attempt of flying to Italy, this part of our trip would also become quite the travel adventure. After two trains cancelled due to an issue with the track, we were told we could take a bus. After our hour bus ride, we arrived at the central train station to find what looked like a scene out of a movie. People from wall to wall, a full schedule board of trains saying delayed 3 plus hours are cancelled. Our bad travel luck seemed to be getting worse. 20 minutes after scheduled departure, the board finally showed a platform for our train. After 45 minutes, we finally departed and were on our way with many announcements apologizing for the IT issues at the train control center, which, for those of you who don't speak Italian, roughly translates to train strike. After dropping off our stuff at the Airbnb, we went out to dinner at Trattoria Austria del Ostre, a traditional Tuscan steakhouse. The restaurant features 12 different types of dry-aged beef, which is displayed in their front window. Since we had such a long day of travel, we ordered a 2.6 kilogram Bastica alla Florentina, which is 5 and 3 quarter pounds for all of the people watching from where I am from, and a side of roasted potatoes. Following dinner, on our walk back, we stopped at a gelato shop in Florence's central train station. Back on track the following morning, after a good night's sleep from being worn out from traveling and being full of meat, we walked around the city of Florence. We checked out the Mercado di San Lorenzo, which featured all kinds of specialty shops and food vendors, before heading to pick up our rental car. We then drove an hour through the very fun winding hillside roads of Loroino Semfino to get to our Tuscan villa where we planned to stay the remainder of our trip. Rilas Villo Belpoggio, a beautiful 17th century historic residence surrounded by the hills of olive groves. The staff were very amazing and helpful, and it was just the laid-back Tuscan experience we were looking for. For our first night's dinner, we went to a local farmhouse restaurant called Osteria de la Colina. The restaurant offered an amazing food accompanied with amazing views. Our four-course meal consisted with a charcuterie board featuring cured meats, cheeses, crostini, with pate and a pepper jam with rosemary focaccia. Next came four very large mozzarella ravioli with a garden fresh tomato sauce. For our main course, we had a nice steak with porcini mushrooms and shaved black truffles. Following dinner, we had a chocolate torte for dessert. On day two of the Tuscan portion of our vacation, we traveled to the Chianti region to the Cantalique Winery, where we took a tour of the facility and had a wine and olive oil tasting. After our whining adventure, it was time for some dining. We went to the Ristorante Pizzeria Ve Pensiero, where we had another nice meal. We started with Concalini Fiorentini, small fried dough balls wrapped in prosciutto served with burrata, followed by a pasta featuring artichoke hearts and bacon. For our main course, we had a wood-fired pizza with prosciutto, sun-dried tomatoes, burrata, and pesto. After dinner, we had a piece of chocolate cake. 
The following morning, we drove back to Florence Airport to start to make our way back home. Despite our flight not looking so great, we were able to make it on board ITA 1682 from Florence to FCO. Our 45-minute flight took place on an ITA Airbus A319, where I had seat 22 Alpha. As soon as the aircraft leveled off, it started its initial descent into Rome. This was the first time boarding a plane from walking across the tarmac and boarding from the rear, which was a pretty cool and interesting experience for me. After we arrived in Rome, we checked into the Hilton Garden Inn at Rome Airport for our last night in Italy. The hotel was located on the southwest corner of the airport and offered a nice view of the arriving traffic on runway 34 right with just a short walk across the parking lot. Although it was fairly far shot and there was a lot of heavy traffic going to the other side of the airport and using 34 left, I did manage to get some nicely lit approach and touchdown videos. The next day, it was time to come home from our five-day Italian adventure. Unlike our trip to Rome, there were thankfully seats open on our flight home, and we were able to get on. November 826 November Whiskey, a Delta A330-302 with General Electric CF6s, would be our ride home as Delta 207. I was able to get the last seat in Delta Premium Select, which was an aisle seat. My girlfriend got the very last row to herself and was able to get a video of our return trip home. So as I mentioned in the last video, which was the first travel type vlog I posted, these first couple were kind of an afterthought and the footage I used in them wasn't recorded for this purpose, which is why it may seem kind of random at times and not really matching the story. If you do like the concept of this vlog series, please stay tuned. Although the third trip we went on was a little while ago, it was after I decided to start making this series. So we did actually put an effort into recording content for these types of videos. Besides the next aviation filled travel vlog, which takes place somewhere in Europe, we are gearing up for a special aviation based trip that is any big plane lover's dream. You don't want to miss this adventure and the planes we are flying on. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.